Unemployed and Afraid acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this episode on and of the land where you, the listener, are tuning in from. We would like to pay our respects to Elders past, present and extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, acknowledging that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Unemployed and Afraid a podcast that explores the messy middle of being out on your own and starting over with the people who've done it. I'm your host, Kim Curtin. Thank you for being here. Let's get into today's story of starting over. Hello, and thank you for listening to Unemployed and Afraid, where we get to hear about the stories of starting over from the generous humans who share them. And call it an algorithm bias, but in the world of social media, it seems that some people are just meant to show up in your feed. And today's guest is a perfect example. You'll hear all about it in the episode, but in short, I connected with Kimberly Turner Eng, my guest for today's ep, via a LinkedIn update that she shared about taking a break from her career. And it makes today's episode just a little bit different, as I'm lucky enough to be chatting with Kimberly while she's on said career break. She hasn't started a business or made any firm moves to retrain in a new field. She's simply taking a break from her career to clear her head and realign with her values which is the place I was through early 2020. Kimberly shares the story of how she came to this decision, how she planned for it, something I definitely could have learned from, and what it's been like to proudly own her status of on a break. I loved chatting with Kimberly, not just because we share the same name and because she used to work at Nike, which I really love as I'm a little bit sneaker obsessed, but because of her brilliant example of how sharing your story can allow others to be brave and feel supported. So if you're craving some time to think, want to really get to know yourself and think that taking a career pause might be just what you need, you'll really love this chat. Here it is. I'm spending time today with Kimberly Turner Eng, who's joining me all the way from Portland, Oregon. I first connected with Kimberly on LinkedIn after a post that she shared on her page went viral and subsequently ended up in my feed. In her post, she said this, I resigned this week because I needed to reset. This requires some time away from endless emails, video conference calls, deadlines, and forgetting what I had for lunch. This decision comes with my health, happiness, and personal values at the forefront. I am taking a career sabbatical to reclaim my health, run on trails, travel to new places, and spend time with loved ones. I am using this time to be curious and intentional as I shape the next values-driven chapter. I am letting go, embracing uncertainty, doubling down, and placing a bold bet on myself. Anything can happen. I think you can see right there why I was interested in chatting with Kimberly today. She resigned from a long and successful career that included executive positions at Amazon and Nike. Since sharing her story, Kimberly has written a beautiful piece about her journey for Business Insider and is on the path to reconnecting to herself. In terms of being right in the sometimes messy middle of starting over, she is well and truly in the arena. Kimberly, I can't wait to learn more about you. Welcome to Unemployed and Afraid. Well, Kim, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Oh, thank you. And you, it would be remiss of me to ask something that's been um, been on my mind for years. You've worked there. You've worked at Nike. Is it Nike or Nike? <laughs> it's Nike, that's for sure. Okay. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad we've cleared that up because as I said it, yeah. I thought, oh, dear, if I have gotten that wrong. <laughs> be terribly awkward when this is released <laughs> yes but it is funny when you travel around the world there you know some people do say nike um mm-hmm. you know here in the u.s we say nike but i um, glad we could get that all cleared up <laughs> yes the important stuff tackling that the early, important so. stuff yep so before we get into your big story of change let's break the ass a little further and tell me how would your husband nathan describe you he would describe me as fun um adventurous and curious. I love to ask questions of people. So he would definitely describe me as that. Oh, that's a beautiful way to be described. I love that. <laughs> uh, okay, one more from you, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak another one in for me. Tell me what is what is life in Oregon like? What's the vibe? Oregon is truly one of the most beautiful places on earth. It's it's God's country. We're very outdoorsy here. Um, it's very green. We get a lot of rain. So that's how we're so green. But from Portland, Oregon, where I live, I'm an hour and a half from the beach and I'm an hour and a half from the mountains. So we have a big 
um, hiking vibe, a big skiing vibe, a lot of mountain bikers and runners. And so um, wow. super outdoorsy. And we really just value that a lot. Wow, that sounds fantastic. Doesn't sound too dissimilar to Tasmania, where, where I am, except for the snow. Uh, we don't get enough mm. of that to be able to actually ski or snowboard, but we get to look at it every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds absolutely beautiful. So Kimberly, tell me, what was your last role like? My last role that I just recently um, left um, was at Amazon. I was in a sales account management role, working with third-party customers and helping small businesses to be successful on the Amazon platform. Um, I loved it because I was driving business development, um, business growth opportunities, you know, omni-channel growth for for these these customers. And I just, you know, what I I loved it, but I but I felt misaligned with my values, and I know that's what we're going to get into a little bit today. So I really feel. Um, I loved working at Amazon. It was a great company, learned a lot, was able to add a lot of value. It was just, you know, time to, to seek something different. Yeah, I can understand that completely. And was your role at Nike quite similar to that? Have you always been in that field of kind of heavy customer service, heavy sales? Um, a little bit, yes. So my role at Nike, I was there for goodness, almost 18 years, um, started there right out of college. And I had progressive roles in finance operations. But most of my time at Nike was in account management, where I was working with their largest retail partners, um, you may know Foot Locker, mm -hmm. um, or Dick's Sporting Goods, um, large, large global partners where um, I was selling in footwear, apparel and equipment. Um, really helping to drive creative business results for, for my retail partners. So account management was really what I was good at. I was good at leading, you know, customers to help them succeed. I was presenting a lot. I was traveling a ton. Um, and let's be honest, it was Nike. It was a sexy job. I got to talk about sports all day and shoes and apparel. So I really enjoyed my time there. It was truly, truly a privilege to work at Nike. Wow. I, uh, I recently read Shoe Dog. Uh, of course, yes. um, it's, yes. it's one of those books I think we should all have a have a read of. It's such an interesting journey. So, and I'm a, I'm a not so closet sneakerhead. So, oh, <laughs> are you? Yes, yes, I have a, a number of um, it, MX nineties are my are my favorites. So <laughs> get a, oh. a lot of those. Yeah, bit of a fan of of Nike. So of course I had to ask you that. Um, yes, well, and Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, is from Portland, Oregon, right where I live. So um, Nike world headquarters are here it's an absolutely yeah. beautiful campus people come from all over the world to work here you know it's 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 truly an exciting place to work that's for sure yeah. so you left left your role at Nike and you went into Amazon and I'm guessing there was it was a time that you started to really consider what things were looking like for you for next steps so what prompted you to start thinking about taking a career break yeah, well, I think it'd be good if I walked back a bit and talked to you about my my sort of journey from Nike to Amazon and then kind of where that brought me now. I was at Nike for 18 years. I kind of tell people that I grew up there. It was my first job out of college, stayed there for, for quite some time. I loved every minute of it. And I always told myself, you know, I'll stay here as long as I'm growing and learning and sort of, you know, accelerating. And I felt a great deal of achievement there. I was really motivated by achievement by uh, titles, by output. But I kind of hit a point where I realized I was no longer growing at Nike. Um, there were some reorganizations going on. They were going to move me into a new role. And, and it just didn't feel like I was going to be you know, expanding there. So in my gut and in my intuition, I just knew it was time to move on. And that was actually quite an emotional time for me leaving Nike because it was all I knew. It was the only work I knew. It was the only people I knew, but I just knew I had to move on and get some new experience. And so the role came up at Amazon and I thought, well, gosh, this, this feels seamless. You know, my roles at Nike were very retail focused, but I knew I wanted to maybe get into to tech and Amazon would allow me some exposure into digital, uh, working with um, other business partners. And it just felt like it would be a seamless transition while gaining no experience. And so that's what I did. So I took a new role at Amazon, um, which was up in Seattle. It's about three hours north of Portland. So I actually commuted there for the first hour and a half. I got an apartment in Seattle. My husband was still here in Portland. I was commuting, um, you know, three hours on Monday. I'd stay up there during the week, and then I would come home on Thursday nights. And so that first year and a half or so at Amazon, I will be honest, it was quite grueling. It was a lot, um, yeah. but I did it because I wanted to grow. I wanted to get that experience and work for such a global, um, important brand, right? Um, then eventually my husband moved up there and so then we were, we were in Seattle. But during that time at Amazon, when I was working in Seattle, 
and I say this with true authenticity, um, I always dreamed of working in a really big city. And that's what Seattle is. It's kind of like the West Coast Manhattan, if you will. It's just very cosmopolitan, very international, very fast. Um, my days became exhausting. I felt like my days revolved around a long commute, a long work day, you know, late nights, a lot of business travel. I just started to step back and think about what is this all for? You know, and I barely saw my husband because he was working opposite hours. So I just started to kind of step back in about 2019 and just said, you know, what, what is this for? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm successful. I was driven by achievement. And I started to ask the question, am I still motivated by achievement? Am I still motivated by money? And, and the answer started to become no, you know, I'm not sure that I am. Um, and then I got sick and I got my cerebral spinal fluid leak. Um, and I kind of almost took that as a, uh, almost as a message from God or from the universe saying like, you got to slow down. So the, the health condition I got in August of 2019, I considered that to be a bit of a wake up call. It was, it was a crushing headache. It was a spinal neurological condition that really I was bedridden for a couple of months wow. and had to take a leave of absence. And, and, and so during that leave of absence up in Seattle, here I am in this, you know, fast paced city, um, 600 square foot apartment by myself bedridden for, for a month or two. And I just remember sitting there going, what's this all for? I don't see my family. I don't see my friends. I'm working so hard. You know, what's, what's this all for? And so at that time I made the commitment to myself and I talked to my husband about it and just said, listen, like, I think I need a break. Like, I think I need to step back from, from the hustle just a little bit and, and get a grip. So I wasn't quite ready to do it in 2019. We, we needed to kind of save you know, financially before I could do it, but I knew in 2019 that I needed to do it. So, you know, fast forwarding into COVID, we all know how that sort of hit us like a ton of bricks <laughs> here, right? COVID happened. We came back to Portland and it was during that time that it became even more clear, right? Because once, once COVID happened, we were all working from home on our laptops. When you remove the social aspects of the office, the commute and the buzz of the city, the happy hours after work, the business travel, when you remove all that. And for me, it was me and my laptop all day. I felt isolated and lonely. And so it became even more clear. And so I just started every day. I felt like my light started to dim a little bit. I started to feel totally misaligned. I felt like a small piece of me was almost dying and I couldn't identify exactly what it was because I liked my job. But um, something felt wrong, and and so that's when I knew that it was time. It was time to to step back. So that's when I left, and that was two months ago. And uh, here I am now. <laughs> so wow. I think that was a long answer to your question, but um, that's kind of just at the high level, sort of my journey. So here I am talking it's, to you. It's a perfect answer to my question, and it's so interesting that you touch on even when we were talking about Nike and what you were talking about there, the status that comes with the roles that we hold and the way in which that status can translate into our personal brand identity can be, in my experience and perhaps in yours too, one of the hardest things to, to break away from. Who am I without the status of the role, without the busyness, the distraction, the enjoyable paycheck, the, the freedom to do what it is that I need to do to be able to access beautiful restaurants and, and great parties and things like that that do sometimes come along with, with pre-COVID most certainly, with, with some of these roles. It's a very interesting thought to, to touch on really and what comes next when you're breaking away from that identity and, and making that pull. You mentioned as well that you really looked at your finances ahead of this. Um, that, I said to you before uh, we started recording, is one part of my journey I wish I had taken a little bit more interest in, a bit more formal planning for that uh, part of it, whilst I, I did scurry away um, as much as I possibly could in my, my notice period. That financial support over this period of change is so important. So how did you tackle that? Yeah, I want to answer that question. And before I do, I want to back up to what you just said, because I think you said something that honestly is the number one thing that I think about all the time is having a successful career at Nike was whining and dining customers. It was traveling all over the country. It was late night parties. It was business titles. Um, and all of that was so fun. You know, you meet somebody to party. The first thing they ask you is, hi, Kimberly, what do you do? It's the very first thing. And I found that becoming an attachment to my identity so much so that, you know, people didn't know me without that title or without um, a really robust career. And so I have felt detached of just, well, who am I without my career? And that's the question that I want to answer. And I think it's going to take a lot of work 
and a lot of deep programming because we're, at least me, I feel I've been programmed for achievement. And that's not a bad thing. I think, you know, we always want to set goals. We want to tackle it and, and deliver success, but I'm just starting to rethink, well, what is success and what is achieving? And so who am I without my job? So that I just wanted to just kind of put an exclamation point on what you said, because I think that's really important. And that's the work that I'm excited to do. So your second question was around finances, and I think it's a really good one. Um, and everybody's obviously in a different space with how they tackle this. In 2019, when I started to realize I, that I wanted to step back, I just kind of felt overwhelmed with, well, how? I mean, it's expensive, right? <laughs> you know, like yeah. you can't just quit and like, what the heck? And then here in the US, we've got, you know, health insurance is a real challenge here in the United States. So I started to actually dabble a little bit if you've heard of the FIRE movement, financial independence to retire early. And I'm certainly not FIRE at this point, but it's basically a movement of people who um, opt out early in their 30s or in their early 40s. They save, they live well below their means. They they put a ton of money aside to be able to, to you know, fully retire early. Now, just to be clear, I'm, you know, we're not there yet, but um, th- a lot of these bloggers and influencers really inspired me and my husband to start to really live below our means. You know, I mean, we, we saved and anytime we got a bonus, anytime we got, you know, stock um, vesting, we would just put it away and pretend like we didn't have it. We haven't been doing kitchen remodels, right? Like we didn't buy a lot of cars. We're down to one car that we share and it's paid off. So we've had to make some sacrifices for sure but we're not living. I mean, we still have a wonderful life. It's just, I've started to reprioritize, like, what is it that I really need? And do I really need to chase consumerism? Is that fulfilling? So that's kind of what I did. And so we saved and, and, you know, we're able to afford for me to take an extended period of time off. And so living below your means, and it's not, it's not easy to do, but I, you know, that's, that's kind of the way we approached it. That's a brilliant way to approach it. I hadn't heard of the FIRE movement. I love an acronym. So that is um, something that's going to stay in my mind now yes, forever. I'll check it out. That. Yeah. I definitely had a similar experience in terms of scurrying and saving. And, and one experience you reminded me of in telling your story there is when you are working with clients, when you are in an office, when you are client facing, a great wardrobe comes along with that. I am someone yes. who loves a fabulous handbag and a great pair of shoes, uh, or I'll say I'm someone who did love a fabulous handbag and, you know, practical real talk. When I quit and I was out on my own, I looked at all of those possessions. COVID was, was deep. There was absolutely no need for it in a tiny town on Tasmania's East coast. I sold all of those beautiful fashion pieces, ah. <laughs> not almost all of them. I, I did hold on to one or two, but to, to look at that and think, okay, is what I, what did I attach to this? What did this mean to me at the time? It was, part of my identity and my self-expression as somebody who was capable to hit high targets and to have a great career and to, to make an impact in the in the field that I was in. It came as, with the identity for me. So financially, it was great to be able to free up just a little bit of, of money at the time, but it was also a little shedding of um, identity um, at the time too. Yeah. Did it feel like kind of a, a process and kind of like letting go? And I, I can imagine that would be emotional, but almost like just a good process to, yeah. to, to do kind of that was my old life and I'm moving into something new. And I love hearing you say that about rituals. Cause I've thought of that as well, just kind of what could be a ritual that would be a good closure to this chapter of my life. Um, mm. And maybe it is kind of selling some old clothes and things that I identified with, with sort of my work identity. I love that. Yeah. There's a few pieces in retrospect. I look at and think, Ooh, we mind having that now, but <laughs> <laughs> But no, it is it is part of um, getting back in touch with who you are at the core, stripping things away. You know, I say that from a, a, a place of privilege that I had some of those pieces in the first place. Of course, you know, we, we often work very hard for those for those things, but I feel very privileged and very lucky to have had it. But goodness me, it felt good to get rid of some of that weight and, and look at myself. Um, we spoke before we hit record, uh, you know, I think at a core level, we are soul sisters. So I just felt like you were going to understand that completely. We are soul sisters. <laughs> yes. Um, no, take me back to the moment that you resigned, the the time you had to go in and tell your colleagues and let your employer know where you were at. What did that feel like? And how did that play out? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, You know, I mean, it was it was hard. It it was, you know, right before the holidays. And so certainly um, kind of a tough time towards the end of the year. But my manager was so understanding. Um, I just, you know, shared with her that I wanted to step back and needed some time and, you know, really loved kind of working there, but needed to, to step back. And she was super receptive. So we kind of aligned on transition plans and, and, you know, I left, I mean, my, my team was just so supportive. I couldn't have asked for a better team um, or more support. So it was, it was a 
fairly easy and very understanding conversation for sure. Oh, that's brilliant. That must have been really nice to have that support and to feel um, comfortable in that transition while stepping away. Absolutely. I feel very, very fortunate. <laughs> so logging off for the, the very last time, closing, returning the laptop, how did you feel in that moment? I felt the only word that can come to mind is I felt free. I felt free. Um, dropped off my laptop and, I, you know, I didn't feel sadness. I felt happiness, but mostly I felt free. I, I've worked every summer since I was 14 years old. And I've certainly in my adult years had a career all the time. I've never not worked. Um, and when we were, when we work for a company, we inherently, you know, report to that company and they, they in exchange for time, right. You exchange your time for a paycheck. And so for the first time in my life, I just, I felt free and that's how I feel right now. I get to shape my day. I get to shape my time. I get to do the work and I'm just so excited. Yeah. It wasn't just free. That's the only word I can use. That's a brilliant word. And 60 days out of, of leaving, I have caught you at just such a fabulous time. But I imagine <laughs> it has been a bit of a journey through that. I want to go back to the LinkedIn post that I read in my introduction mm -hmm. for you. Uh, so you shared your career update in such an eloquent way on LinkedIn and it went viral, most certainly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I saw something like almost 2,000 comments and a lot of interaction generally, you know, 50, 60,000 interactions uh, turned up in my in my feed. And there were a flood of comments beneath. I did a quick scroll and I saw a lot of fantastic support, a lot of um, people relating to your story and feeling inspired by your bravery, which was so nice. But I did also see quite a few negative and very unfair opinions, in, in my opinion, stereotyping about your financials, your social status, your privilege. It, it made me quite angry, but I most certainly don't want to put words into your mouth. Were you surprised by this? And how did you manage that? You know, I didn't focus on the negative comments. I focused on the heartfelt, encouraging comments. There's always going to be haters, you know, and, and I, I can only be responsible for myself. I can't be responsible for someone else's reaction to it. So I didn't, I didn't really let it affect me. I mean, my career... I've worked really hard. I've worked for everything that I have. And so um, I didn't, I didn't think too much of it, to be honest. I can't. It's a yeah. fantastic approach. I, you know, was very surprised. It never ceases to amaze me. Some of the, the comments and opinions that come out, you know, back to people who share themselves so vulnerably um, in, you know, in the sphere of the internet. Uh, it's trolling for lack of a better word is a very upsetting part of society when we're all out here just trying to make our own way in the world. So I'm really happy to hear that. Um, you know, I think from what I saw, a lot of the pe a lot of other people got uh, on your side there and, and shut yeah. any negativity down. Yeah. And you know, I find that with negative people when they're the way they treat others is generally um, a reaction to how they feel about themselves is sort of what I found in my experience. So I, that's part of why I didn't, I didn't let it really get me down. But um, that post just took my breath away how viral it went. And I can tell you that to your point, I received thousands of comments and likes, the LinkedIn, you know, corporate responded to it, business insider reached out to me. But I think what was so touching is my inbox was filled with thousands of notes from people all over the world mm. saying that they were inspired by my story, looking for encouragements, considering doing the same thing. But really, I'm also feeling a lot of notes from people who just feel stuck. So there's something going on in the world, um, the great resignation, whatever you call it, where people are feeling called to, to step back and realign with their values. That was my takeaway from it. So I responded to every note that I could. A couple of people did end up resigning and they thanked me and they said that I was inspiring. A couple people took a leave of absence. I've had some conference calls with some of those people. And that just makes my heart so happy if my simple post could even inspire one person to take action, to do what's best for their lives. And that makes me really happy. So that was kind of how I felt. And it was exciting. That's so wonderful. There really is something to be said for sharing your perspective, your journey. Often we we hold back from sharing parts of ourselves with the world for fear of judgment, for fear of mm -hmm. being hashtag cancelled or something ridiculous. Uh, but <laughs> just sharing your truth with the world and trying new things and putting your story out there, there's just so much benefit to that. So I congratulate yeah. you. For, for doing and that. what would the world be like if we all lived fearlessly, right? If 
if all of us lived fearlessly without fear of being canceled or backlash or judged or trolled, Mm -hmm. if we all lived fearlessly, what could it be like? You know, could the world be a better place? Could we be kinder to each other? I just wonder. So I love that you that you mentioned that. I think it's really important. And so the last 60 days, what has surprised you most about your journey so far? Um, I'm surprised that I can sleep in as much as I do. I, I just feel, you know, 60 days isn't that long. So I've spent time sleeping in, um, just resting from a really long career. I've spent time traveling right now it's winter where I live here on the West coast. So I've been to Arizona, I've been to Florida and Southern California to get some sun. I spent time with family. Yeah. I've been surprised by how calm I've felt. I didn't realize how much anxiety that I was associating with my job. Um, Just kind of this physical reaction to working every day. And by removing that, I feel, I feel a lot calmer. So I'm excited to see how that can continue. That makes a lot of sense. I had that on my own journey as well. I didn't quite realize how heightened my sympathetic nervous system had been for so long and how long it can take to allow that to to come back, to to rest. It comes out in in funny ways in, in my experience where you notice the absence of adrenaline more than you feel calm in the moment. That was my experience. Right. And when we spend so many years achieving and on a hamster wheel and going and going a hundred miles an hour to just all of a sudden slam on the brakes, it it, it can be a little disorienting. And so I do feel it's going to take a little time to sort of calm the nervous system. Um, It's happening a little bit quicker than I thought, but I do think it's going to, it's going to take a while because I'm getting to know myself again. Right. And I know you went through a similar experience. Absolutely. And it's so great to hear that you're sleeping. This is a very timely thing. (laughs) I'm just reading a a book called why we sleep and the importance of sleep and, you know, how it helps calm those systems and how it helps, you know, of course we all know that sleep is great, but sometimes in the corporate space, we can really glorify, you know, I can work on five hours sleep and be in the office at 5.45 there to eight, you know, that sort of commitment to work can really be a little over glorified. I've, I've since really, really gotten attached to my sleep patterns. <laughs> and yes. Very unwilling to let those go. So good on you for, for sleeping yes. and taking good care of your insides. Has, has there ever been a moment, just even one moment where you've doubted your journey, where you've doubted your choice? No. No, I, I knew by the time I quit my job, I knew that it was time. Um, I compare it to like, if you have a really full garage, let's just imagine you have so much stuff in your garage, but you want to go buy a new paddleboard or you want to get a new car, but it just doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. You have to clean the garage before you can get something new. That's kind of how I felt in my life or with my job. I just felt like I didn't know what's next and I still don't, but I knew that I had to the only thing I knew is that I had to step away so that I could kind of reassess. So I feel like I'm cleaning out my garage a little bit um, by stepping back and, and no regrets. I'm only looking forward. Fantastic. How do your days look at the moment, apart from a lovely sleep in? Oh, well, when I'm not traveling, I've been on three wonderful trips, but right now I'm, I'm getting up, um, making coffee. I read a little bit in the morning. I'm reading a book called The Purpose Driven Life, which is sort of a daily, like a daily affirmation of kind of figuring out kind of your life and, you know, what your calling is. So I, I, I read that in the morning. I walk in the woods. I have 30 miles of trails right by my house. So I walk in the woods every single day or I run. You know, by the afternoon, I reconnect with my husband. He cooks dinner. I feel so blessed that he is an amazing cook and we enjoy dinner together every night. You know, there is no typical day. A couple of days a week, I'll meet a friend for lunch, hang out with family. That's kind of uh, that's kind of how it's shaping up right now. We'll see. So nice to be able to connect with family a little bit. I know over the years living away from my family while I while I worked and worked really hard. I still live away from my family and having a little bit of headspace to be very present in phone calls or very present in visits is very special. And I found it in my experience, it really deepens a lot of relationships beyond what I had experienced before I gave myself a chance to have a little break. So I don't know if that's been your experience. It has been practicing presence. One of the first things I did after I left my job in January was I went down to California and spent a week with my family. And normally when I'm with them, I'm running around or we have plans all the time, but I found this to be such a fulfilling trip because I could just be like, we could just be present. We didn't have to have a big agenda. And I felt more engaged um, with them than when I was working so hard, you know, because when you're working, when you have a high stressful job, your brain is kind of 
always there too, right? So it's hard to be present, but I, I can relate to what you just said. And, and that's one of my goals is to be super present for my family and just enjoy this time. You know, it's not a dress rehearsal. Yes, this is very true. Are there any curiosities or budding plans that are starting to bloom in your mind? I'm trying to not be super planful. I'm trying to see, um, you know, kind of reconnect with my intuition and see, you know, what each day and each moment brings me before I start making too many plans. I want to see kind of what that is. My husband and I are planning a trip. We want to explore the national parks down in Utah. We might do kind of a trip down there this spring. Um, but beyond that, I haven't, I haven't gotten too far. I just plan to connect with nature. I plan to um, journal, you know, write, write down daily gratitude. And that's about as far as I've gotten. So I don't know if I'm even in the messy middle yet, or if I'm at the, um, you know, the crazy beginning, but I'm somewhere in between. And, you know, I just, I feel free and I feel totally fearless. That's how I feel. It's fantastic. And I think it's really wonderful for people to hear. I often, I joke about the title of my podcast being Unemployed and Afraid because it's a play, I guess, maybe more of a, of a reference to you know, some of the days that, that could pop up on the journey where you think, oh, goodness, what am I going to do next week? Or, oh, hey, hey, I kind of am interested in this. Could this be a job? And, you know, those little periods. But you're right that having the time, you know, when I, when I left my role, I told you before we were recording, I went and did yoga teacher training and was running a lot too with my partner and had some trips mm. with my family to, to connect, which was lucky I snuck it in before COVID started and it had a little bit of quiet time. And it's really, really important to do. Sometimes was so motivated by the freedom I had. I was in a hurry to figure out what was next. I was so excited by what was coming and what could come. I was in a rush to get to the edge. And, and sometimes that can mm -hmm. be a little anxiety inducing, ironically, because mm -hmm. you're so excited about rushing to the next thing and what could be and what's so exciting. And, you know, it's about staying in that place where you just follow your intuition. And if you're starting over, you don't necessarily get to choose what comes next. You're trusting the process. And it is very empowering and very exciting, which is why I was so excited to talk to you today whilst being in that moment before any plans are made, you know, things are exciting. Yeah. And maybe it is kind of the honeymoon phase of just leaving my job and I'm having fun and enjoying it. And I remember writing to you when I said, Oh, your podcast is unemployed and afraid, but I'm not afraid, you know, like I do feel fearless. However, I will say, you know, I'm sure there's going to be moments coming up and I'm I don't know if I'm prepared for them or not, where I'm going to sit there and go, well, shit, what's next, right? I'm sure that I'm going to have those moments. I haven't hit them yet, but I think that's okay. I mean, fear, false evidence appearing is real, right? Um, you know, maybe we don't know what's next, but we just know that something better, you know, is out there. I mean, there's always two choices, you know, keep doing what you're doing and you'll keep getting what you're getting or, you know, make a change and move forward. And so that's what I chose to do. And I know that's what you chose to do. And <laughs> so ask me in six months, I might be like, oh no, now what? But, uh, but I'm ready for it. I feel fearless and I'm excited. No, I think you're going to be in exactly the same place. I think a lot of the fear um, about quitting your job, about starting something new can sometimes come before the act, uh, before you've actually stepped out. And, you know, once you get past that fear of starting something new and making a change, you know, that's, that's where the, the play on words comes in. Once you get past that, it's very exciting and you will discover things that you couldn't have possibly discovered without the headspace that you've achieved, no matter how you tackle your journey of change, be it by removing yourself from a career completely, by taking a step back, by just throwing yourself into something new, no matter the journey, it is always a little scarier before you step out and start to trust yourself. And you know, I think you're in for a very, very exciting journey. And I think there's going to be lots of wonderful opportunities and people that are going to come into your universe that you haven't couldn't have even dreamed of or couldn't have thought of at this stage so I congratulate you for for choosing yourself for choosing your family for choosing your health uh, and recognizing that it was time to do that um, in the right time that it was for you I, I have nothing but congratulations for you and I'm so excited to see how you progress into the next stage of your journey I'll be watching very closely I am super excited for you and I want to um, finish our chat today to ask how the listener and I can support you on the journey. And the reason I ask this question is what I have found is the, the beauty in community, the way that we support each other, the way that we share stories, the way we share vulnerability is you know, really a big part of change and a big part of starting over. So I would love to know, is there anything that we could do to support you right now? 
Well, thank you so much. And thank you for welcoming me to your community. I'm just so grateful to be a part of it and to connect with your other listeners. I would love any advice that listeners may have around books, other podcasts, as well as your own um, stories, or even, you know, uh, you know, stories along the way from some of your listeners. I would love, I would love to hear that. Anything that, that you guys may have would be super helpful. Certainly books. I've got plenty of time to read some books right now. <laughs> yes. And I will leave you with, um, with two of my own. So I uh, have a friend, a dear friend who has a beautiful podcast called So I Quit My Day Job. Her name is Catherine oh. Mahoney. She left her career to chase the dream of being an author and um, she has achieved that dream. And the other thing I would recommend is a great book called How to Do the Work. If you spend any time on Instagram, you may have encountered the, the holistic psychologist and uh, mm. she is packed with wisdom. I think she that's a beautiful place to start whenever you're on a, a self-development journey. I know I couldn't couldn't put it down. So but if you ever need advice, I keep all of my books that I've read in my phone so I can quickly flick them off to people because, yeah, you, you can't read enough on this journey. It's exciting. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much for that advice. And I'm just so honored to be a part of the community and look forward to engaging with with everyone going forward. I know we're all just trying to seek happiness and live in alignment with our values. And I think if we can do that, the world can be a better place. Absolutely agree with you, Kimberly. It has been such a pleasure to chat with you today, to hear your story, to learn more about you. I thank you wholeheartedly for sharing your story so openly, first on LinkedIn, secondly on the Business Insider and further here with me today. I'm sure it won't be the last time I get to engage in your wonderful story and, and hear what happens next. So thank you for sharing it with me today. Thank you for having me today, Kim, my soul sister. Uh -huh. Yeah, I hope you've got a spare room over there. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what stage of starting over you're in, community is the game changer. Hearing the stories of others, connecting, sharing resources, and generally feeling supported by other humans who get where you're at is the best. And that's what I'm looking to build here. And if it's something you love, then leaving a star rating and a review wherever you're listening is like gifting me a special golden ticket. It supports the show so, so much and makes me do a little happy dance for days. So drop a review and get me dancing. And don't forget to come and join the Unemployed and Afraid community on Facebook. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening to Unemployed and Afraid, the stories of starting over with your host, me, Kim Curtin. If you liked the episode and are keen to hear more, please hit the follow button and leave a review. And let's keep the conversation going on Instagram at Unemployed and Afraid where there's more goodies and links to today's show notes. See you there.